Hello everyone and welcome to my channel DIY D365. First of all, uh, thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel, visiting my blogs and watching my videos as well. Thank you. Um, I'm starting a new series today which is called Power Apps for Business Users and Functional Consultants. Um, and this is its episode one. Um, primarily for functional consultants and end users. Um, the purpose of this series is to show you everything from the scratch, uh, the very basics of Canvas apps, Power Apps, Microsoft Flows, and Power BI, so you can start working on your own uh, and leverage the Power Platform. That's what I want. So let's begin. Um, so number one is you'll have to create a login. Uh, so sign up on powerapps.microsoft.com. If you already have a login, you can go to make.powerapps.com. Um, so I'll quickly show you the page. So it's like, no, it's not like this. Um, it's like this. So you can sign up for free here or you can sign in and it will take you to make.powerapps.com. Uh, sign up for free will ask you for an email ID, which is work or school account. So that's that. Mm. Next one is tabs. Um, so I'll just reduce the size. Um, tabs is basically many items. So file, home, insert, view, and action. These are the top tab tabs uh, you see as when you log into Power Apps. So I'm jumping to my Power Apps, which is this. So when you are creating, so number one, sorry, I should have started from this tab. So this is your basic um, uh, home page. So where you see what do you want to do uh, inside Power Apps. So you can create a Canvas app, you can create a model ribbon app, you can create a portal. Now portal again can be of multiple type, customer service, employee engagement, or employee self-service, or you want to start from data if you have any other application. So this is again Canvas app, but similarly you have Learn, which will provide you different sorts of documentation. This is apps, that's where all your apps are. Uh, you click on create, it will again take you to the same sort of menu where you can create stuff, then you have data, uh, where you have all your entities, um, option sets, etc. Now any flows, so if you click on flows, and then it will take you to Microsoft Flows menu where you can create your own flow. I've got, so this is, uh, this instance is um, basically linked to US region and that's why I'm able to see AI Builder preview. Uh, not necessarily you'll be able to see it until unless you are linked to or your instance is linked to US or Europe region. Similarly you have solutions. So what I've done is uh, when I when I showed you my slide where I was talking about tabs that's when you're creating an app. So that's what I meant from it. This is your landing page where we are. So these are the tabs, file, home, insert, view, action. So file is, let me jump back to my slide because then you can have kind of a, a preview. So on file, the major things for you are save. So you can save your app, you can publish your app from there, you can share your app you can change your app settings from there and a lot many other things so so when i say and a lot many other things uh that might not be necessary for this particular episode we might want to visit that in future number two is home new screen theme and formatting is there so now we'll go back to power apps and check out both file and home tabs So click on file, um, you see save or save as, so you can save an app from two different names if you want. You can share it, uh, then there's collections. So collections can be, you can collect photos from your camera, you can have your um, 
probably variables as collections. Then you have media where you'll have images, videos, audios, etc. And similarly variables. Clicking on collections. And then you have a different connections to your Power Apps, Flows. Um, going back. So this now I'm on my home screen. Home screen provides you three major um, I would say components. Um, new screen, theme and formatting. So you can see this is disabled right now. I'll tell you how to enable it. So new screen, you've got these many screens. So basically you do not have to create a screen to be honest. You can select one of these. The the least which is which you would want to do is a blank screen so that's there as well so you click on that if you need a form you can click on that if you need email so basically email calendar people meeting these are more of office 365 so i'll not talk about this more but you've got a blank screen you've got a form you've got a success screen so if you want to show someone that they've submitted the form and it's submitted successfully um, that's success screen. If you want to see a list, you've got this list and then you've got a scroll bar form or a screen. And then there is one more, which is tutorial. So if you want to, like you see when f first time you log into your um, Dynamics 365 CE instance, you see that dialog where you it shows you kind of a preview, got it and got it and got it. You just keep on saying next or skip that kind of tutorial. Um, so that's that. Now you've got theme. Theme is basically like you have designs in your PowerPoint. So that's that's what it is. So as of now, you can see I've selected blue. So it shows like this. I can change it to lighter color and it changes the color. So it's quite good in those terms. And you wouldn't need, to be honest, more than these colors. Um, Number three uh, in home, I said was formatting. You can see it's disabled. Now it depends what you want to format. Obviously you don't want to format this entire screen. So uh, if I click on this label, everything gets activated. So you can change the font, font size, uh, make it bold, um, underline it, change the color, change the background fill of that label. Uh, and things like that. You can reorder, basically send it to back or front, uh, make the border style or body color thicker. Uh, so things like that. That's under home screen. Going back to my PowerPoint. The next one is insert, which has got the most options in it. So let's check out insert. So if I click on insert, this remains same. Um, so we still have new screen here and it's exactly the same, um, which I've explained to you under home page. Um, now you've got label. So label, if you want to understand it, it's nothing but like how you can see first name here. So it's just a label, does nothing. You can uh, create a name or put a label there. I can change it to something else. So that's your label. Now, button is a button, so you would obviously like to put a button on the screen if you want to take any action from the data which has been input there. So that's your button. Then you have multiple text controls, uh, which a label is one of them, and then you have text input. So when I say text input, this would be considered text input, um, to be honest. And then you have HTML text, rich text, and pen input. So for signatures, etc., you would need pen input. That's good. Number four here is control. So you've got so many types of control. So you've got a button which was uh, there as well. So basically what you use more is available uh, directly on the menu as well as under controls or takes or related items. So then you've got a date picker combo box. So combo box is kind of a, let's say you've got a lookup field um, in CRM that will be visible under combo box. So it looks like a drop down, but it's searchable. It can provide you a list of items. Um, so that's that. And everything here, if you'll see, it's self explanatory, uh, but these are the controls available right now. Then we have got gallery. 
uh, gallery tries to so it combines a lot of uh, controls together so for example images labels um, and images labels and text inputs together and it shows you in a gallery so basically if you want to see all your active contacts uh, of CRM or Dynamics 365 CE you can use this with their entity image so that's that um, data table so let's see on this screen you want to see a new form as well as list of all contacts so that you're not entering duplicate data so you can use a data table so basically um, or so a grid would be pasted here if you click on data table and you can change the columns uh, if you want to now if you want two different forms on one screen again you can do uh, add a form from here right so there's this form and then you can add another form here and then we have media which is images camera um, barcode scanner videos audio microphone control add picture so that that falls under media and then we have charts so if you want to show charts uh, on your power apps you can do that too so it's limited or you can only show these types uh, but still it's available and then we have got icons so you've got a long list of icons here and probably everything you need you'll find it within the icons so that's there so me personally i think icons and buttons are kind of same to me but uh, instead of showing them as a boring rectangle uh, button you can actually choose an icon so for example this check mark is an icon this cross here is an icon but to be honest because they've got a function uh, within them they act like a button when you click on them it works so it's kind of a button to me as well but you can definitely replace a button from an icon now here what we see is AI Builder Preview and you might not be able to see it uh, depending on your instances region if it's US and Europe then only you'll be able to see it um, or you might have some other previews which I'm not aware of so that's that so in my slide I'll not go to it I know the next one is view so view is you can view data sources so whatever so whatever you are connected to like CDS Dynamics 365 SharePoint or whatever data sources you're connected to if I click on it I'll be able to see it um, next one is media so if I click on media it will take me to whatever images videos and audios I've got within my power apps media um, so that's for that um, then you have collections collections again I don't have any uh, as of now because I deleted it after using my camera so I used to collect uh, pictures from my camera so whatever I was clicking from my camera I was uh, coming under collections so then we have variables um, variables are like um, so basically you can apply Excel like formulas in canvas app so mm -hmm. let's say how you do calculate um, total of cell 1 plus cell 2 plus cell 3 you can do that in here as well so if these were uh, text inputs of number type let's say you can do text input 1 plus 2 plus 3 and that will be the value coming out of that would be called variables and you can store that under variables um, which would be here as well somewhere so that's variable uh, advances advanced properties of any item on the screen everything here has got advanced property um, so if I click here it has got advanced um, similarly if I click here go to properties but click on advanced uh, it will take me to advanced properties that is that um, the last one is actions uh, so navigate is there which will enable the navigate function like this and if I click on this button it will show me the correct navigate function for that so navigate to screen 4 um, similarly you have got collect um, now collect again can be um, 
different things. So you can collect images uh, from your camera. So if you if you have, um, let me go into, if you have put in media, let's say camera, and you want to collect pictures from this camera, whatever picture is taken, uh, that can be under collect. Uh, under collect, um, there can be uh, field values as well. So uh, that can be there as well. So, which is good. Uh, well, there can be, what I want to say is in collection, there can be a lot of things which you can collect and then later you can check it out under collections. Remove. Uh, remove is removing from the collection if you want to remove something from collection. So, for example, uh, I want to collect um, this form data and then on, on some button press, I want to remove it, right? Um, similarly, you can uh, activate flows or run flows from here, Canvas apps itself, and that's where uh, this flows button is provided. So if I click here, it will ask me to create a new flow. I'm able to see one, but not necessarily you will until unless you create one. So that's where create a new flow is there. If you click on it, it will take you to flow.microsoft.com and you'll have to either sign up or sign in. So that's that. This is amazing. Um, I hope you've understood it. Um, let's go back to my PowerPoint and repeat the session. So basically, you'll have to sign up or sign in. Uh, these are the uh, main menu items or tabs, home, insert, view, and action. Under file, you've got save, share, settings, collections, and variables and whatnot. There are a lot many options there. Under home, you've got new screen, theme, and formatting. Insert, you've got new screen again, labels, buttons, icons, text controls, um, other controls, galleries, data table forms. Under view, you can view data sources, you can view media, you can view collections, variable, advanced properties, actions. So you can navigate, you can collect, you can remove collection, um, you can enable flows on visible, on hidden properties um, from actions as well. So that's that. Um, that's all today. Uh, let's look at what I'm going to show you guys in the next episode. So the next episode would be about building your first app. So what I want, uh, what I'll show you guys, were, uh, how to build your first app. Obviously, this is not going to be a full-fledged app. Uh, it's not. It will not be a real-world app, uh, but it will be a starting point for you guys uh, to be able to build your own app, maybe a quick app. So we'll do that. Hope you like this video. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Happy CRMing guys. Thank you.